I often encourage people to make videos so that they can share some of the beauty and complexity of geological outcrops that they've seen, like this beautiful example of folded turbidites just a little bit south of Greenvale in North Queensland. But I know it can be a bit of a daunting task when you first start, so I thought I'd make a little bit of a video about how you actually go about it. The first thing people often ask is, what camera do I use? The best camera to use is the camera you've got with you. And for most people, including me, that means the phone because it's in my backpack. If you have to carry a heavy camera, chances are you'll leave it in the truck on the day when you come across that really good outcrop. So just use your phone. Phones these days make exceptionally good quality video and the only time you'll ever need the fancy controls of a professional video camera is when you're doing advertising material and we're not doing that. There's only two other things you really need. One of them is this. It's a remote microphone. It sends the audio from my voice direct to the camera without any interference, like wind noise or other environmental sounds. The one thing that turns viewers off really quickly is poor quality audio, overridden by noisy wind or barking dogs or traffic noise or something else like that. You need to clean that up and the only way to do it is with a remote microphone. They cost about 350 bucks and they're worth every cent. This one's from Rode. They're really good quality, and there's only one little wrinkle with them, and that is that the connectors that come with a standard cable don't fit a standard phone, or at least they fit, but they don't work. The audio you're listening to now is without the remote mic, and you can hear there's lots of other background noise. That's because I've got the connector cable here to show you. This is the standard cable. It has two pins exactly the same with three connectors on them. Now that's all right for most video cameras, but the port on your phone needs one of these with four connectors. And the replacement cable is an SC7. It costs about 20 bucks. This is the full kit here. It's just the microphone, the receiver, and the connector cable. It weighs absolutely nothing and fits easily in your backpack, so it's super easy to carry around when you're working in the field and it just makes a huge difference to the quality of the sound that comes out on your videos. You just put the microphone on your pocket somewhere, about 20 centimeters from your mouth is ideal, and you don't speak into it. Speaking across it works best. Then you plug the black end into the receiver and the grey end into the phone and you're good to go. Depending on the app you use on your phone for recording video, you might have to change the settings to make sure it uses the remote microphone for audio, but most of them will do it automatically. If you're using the microphone on the camera, then the more background environmental noise you're going to get, and that competes with your voice. Right now I'm about a metre away from the camera so it's probably not too bad. But as I move back, you'll see there's more and more environmental noise and it'll get more and more difficult to understand what I'm saying. By the time I get back far enough to see the actual outcrop, most of what you'll be hearing is the environmental noise. The wind, the birds, the trees rustling. And that's just not going to cut it when you're trying to explain something about the outcrop. So let's try that again with the remote microphone. This time the microphone's on my pocket and it's transmitting back to the camera. So it doesn't matter how far away I am. Back here, the sound is still the same and there's a little bit of background noise, but you want that. You want to understand that we're in the bush and this is the environmental sounds, but the voice is clear. And even when I'm on the outcrop 20 meters away, you can still hear my voice very clearly and you get exactly what I'm saying when I'm trying to explain what the outcrop's about. And most of the time when you're making outcrop explanation videos you'll want the camera a reasonable distance away so that you can include the view of the outcrop plus yourself not covering up the outcrop. So that means that you just need to have 
a remote microphone. Otherwise, the sound quality of your explanation will be poor and people will switch off real quick. The other really good thing about remote microphones is they can really cut down wind noise. And wind noise is really annoying to viewers and it's almost impossible to get rid of in post-processing. So far better not to record it in the first place. The way to get around it is a dead cat on top of the microphone. These things cut down the wind noise to almost zero and if I take it off, even on a day like today with a really light breeze blowing, you will hear a big increase in the amount of rumble and wind noise in the background. You can be damn sure that on the day that you find that beautiful, perfect outcrop that you want to explain, there'll be a howling wind blowing and no matter how good your microphone is, the sound will be just awful. Put one of these on and all your problems will be solved. The only other thing you'll need if you're working on your own, as I usually do, is a tripod. I got this super cheap one online. It's really light, not exactly the, the best quality, but it's lightweight. And that means, again, I can carry it in my backpack while I'm doing my normal work and it doesn't act much extra load. And it has a neat little fitting that just screws on top. That fits my phone in there and I can move it to any angle that I need. You can do the classic vlogging style where you hold the phone like this and try to do the video and look at the outcrop and do the video, but really that shaky handheld style is uh, a bit of an artistic choice and it doesn't work well for outcrops. Much better that you let the tripod do the holding and you do the talking. One other technical thing you'll need to decide is do you shoot your footage in HD or 4K? 4K has about four times as many pixels as HD and most phones can shoot 4K footage pretty effectively nowadays. But the harsh reality is the vast majority of screens that people will view your final footage on are HD, including most phones. So what's the point of shooting four times as much data as you need? Well, one advantage is that you can do this. If you want to zoom in on that little bit of outcrop that you're talking about, then you can do it in 4K footage and output the final in HD and the resolution will still look perfect. The downside is that four times as much data needs an awful lot of storage and an awful lot of computing grunt to do the edit. So the edit will take much longer, your computer's more likely to crash more often, and the final rendering is the big time cruncher, and that will take forever using 4K footage, unless you're using a supercomputer. So for beginners, I would recommend starting with shooting HD footage. It just makes life a whole lot easier when you're editing it. And just when you're doing that, make sure you don't leave too much space around your head or the outcrop you're trying to film so that you've got no need to crop it in when you're doing the final edit. Time of day is pretty important too. You generally want to film an outcrop when it's either in full sun or full shade. If you've got half and half like we've got here, then part of it will be nicely exposed and the rest will be completely black. Or if you've got that bit in correct exposure, then this bit will be blown out to white. So as you can see, when it's cloudy like it is now, there's much less contrast between the, the bright areas of the outcrop and the dark areas over there. You can still see plenty of detail and that's a, a workable shot. When the sun comes out, That'll be bright and that'll be dark and you just won't be able to see any detail in there. On top of that, because the sun is coming from my left side here, it'll be bright on this side of my face and very dark on this side. And because I'm wearing a hat, there'll probably be a hard shadow right across the center of my face. That just doesn't work too well for video. So as you can see, cloud really is your friend when it comes to shooting video. It allows you to shoot at pretty much any time of the day and from any angle to the outcrop. So now the sun's out and you can see the difference. 
I've exposed it correctly for this part of the outcrop, but that bit over there is just completely black. So in the sun, side-on shooting just isn't going to work. When you've found that particularly special outcrop and you've come back at a time of day when it's in full sun or full shade, like it is now, then you want to make sure that you shoot all of the footage you need so that when you get back to the editing room, you don't have a missing piece because it's a hell of a job to come back and film that one little critical bit you forgot to record. So get it all before you go home. One way to do that is use the old 5Ws system from the news reports. That is, who, what, when, where, why. If you get all those five things, then you can be pretty sure you got most of what you need. Who? Well, that's you. You can give a brief introduction to who you are, although you may not need that if you're going to post it on a social media platform where people already know who you are. What is the rock itself? Explain a little bit about what the rock type is. When is the age of the rock? Where is where you are in the world? And you might want to give a bit of geological context to that. And the most important bit is why. Why is this particular outcrop special? What are the relationships that it shows? What are the bits and pieces that make it interesting to other people, other geologists? In this case, we've got a beautiful folded quartz vein with some axial planar foliation running down the axes of the folds. If you can find an outcrop like that that shows some relationship really clearly, then that's an ideal subject. If you're having trouble remembering everything that you have to say about the outcrop in one go, then try shooting about one sentence at a time, each one from a different camera angle, a bit like I've been doing with this video here. That way you can cut it together in the editing room and you'll avoid those annoying jump cuts that you get when people cut out the fumbles in the middle of the video. It also avoids the monologue from a single position, which gets a bit boring after a while. And when you're shooting, it's a lot easier on the memory cells. Perhaps the most daunting thing of all for most people is speaking in front of the camera. You know what you want to say, you've got all your thoughts organised, then you step in front of the camera and press the record button and it all just turns into a train wreck in your head. Don't worry, that happens to me too and you just have to get used to it. Just do it again and again and again until you're comfortable saying what you have to say and then the great thing about video is you can cut all the crap takes back in the editing room and the final cut will make you look like a pro.